Shut up and sit down. Hi right, guys, this is Big Mac's Workshop and Paint Studio. I'm Dodge, and we are continuing our Shadow Spear box set painting tutorials. And today we are using the Greater Possessed Demon, um, which is absolutely superb in its sculpting and design. And we're going to paint it in the fashion of the word bearers with some scrolling on the shin pad, um, using a lot of reddish tones and a lot of bone tones. This sculpt is absolutely amazing and I really enjoyed mucking about with these colour schemes of painting this, so let's crack on. The very first thing we did obviously was prime it and we used Vallejo Black Primer for that. After that I'm going to use Dumble Brown by Games Workshop. These are very thin layers but we're going to put those on all the armour plating and we're going to put those all over anything that might be bone later on as well. Uh, the reason for that is I want this sort of reddish undertone to everything that I'm doing so there's a nice nice warm skin tone and colour to the whole model. After that I'm going to use Mornfang Brown and start highlighting up the bone sections. Now the thing with Mornfang Brown and Dumbo Brown is they actually work really well as a highlight and a shade for each other. So you can leave some of the Dumbo Brown showing through on the bone sections all I'm doing here is just glazing that up because we're going to want a lot of Morning Fang Brown showing through there because we've got a lot of other colours to put over the top of it but are in such subtle transitions that you're going to need the other colours to show through. And one of the only reds we're going to use for this is Blood Red by Scale 75. And uh, that's basically the only red I'm using besides a bit of Carabur Crimson. The rest of them are all browns and off browns with a reddish warm tone to them and it really does give a nice effect when you're done. Basically glazing this to the top sections I'm not putting down a full layer so everything on here is going to get glazed. Leaving because it's, it's sort of a living possessed metal um, armor or metal so I want everything to blend ever so slightly and look more alive. After that I'm going to use Rhinox Hide by Games Workshop. Again this is a uh, reddish mahogany sort of brown and I'm going to use that as the base coat for the front shin. The reason for that is I want that to have some scrolling on it because it's quite pronounced and sticks forward and I wanted it to stand out from the rest of the model there. As you can see I did get carried away with that Rhinox hide. I've also used it as the base colour now for most of the skin parts as well and uh, I think I've also watered it down a lot and used it as a wash for the red parts of armour. But the colour we're using right now is Zandri Dust by Games Workshop. And basically going over the Mornfang Brown, leaving some of the Mornfang Brown showing through. But we're taking little glaze motions and just pricking up all those spikes and the head which I decided was going to be a skull and all the ribs. This is quite time consuming but it's definitely worth um, taking your time glazing it up as you can see that already sets the model off very very well. Next I'm going to use Talon Sand on the shin that I want to do the scroll work on. The reason for that is I couldn't think of another parchment style colour to go alongside the bones that we're doing without blending them in too much. So. Start mucking about with my palette a little bit differently nowadays and trying to figure out what colour complements the next colour or what sort of effect I can get from a colour and have it look the same as something else but just subtly different. So we're putting a null oil down now over the Rhinox hide uh, all over the flesh tones. We just want to add some depth into all those parts. Now if I remember correctly, I do believe we wash the bottom halves of the armour as well, just to give them a bit more depth and a bit more, make them a bit more dark. Yeah, I, I am correct there as we are highlighting back up again now. So we're using Scale 75's Blood Red again, which means we must have added a slight wash to that armour plating, otherwise we'd just be doing Blood Red over Blood Red and that would be pointless. So. There must have been a bit of a no oil wash over that red armor as well. And again, we're just glazing the scale 75 blood red up to the uh, top sections of the armor pieces. Unfortunately, when I put this on the cork, I didn't really think about the way it leans forward. So the end result, uh, my highlights are not exactly where I'd want them to be, but they are close enough. 
So next is Carrick Stone by Games Workshop, and we're going to generally cover most of the Talon Sand. It's just going to that Talon Sand's acting as a base, and it's just going to sort of skew the Carrick Stone colour ever so slightly to get a slightly different colour. Next, I'm going back to the Rhinox Hide, and I'm going to start using this to re-highlight the model uh, all over the all over the muscle textures and tones. I wanted the reddish colours to start where the possessed arms were closest to where armour should have been but as his whole chest is exposed and his rib cage, um, I didn't really end up making that arm that red I just kept mucking about with the rhinox hide colours next I'm going to start highlighting with the dryad bark and as you can see on the knuckles there you start to get a nice transition where the reddish colours muted rather than brighter so the armour as that's getting more and more red is actually getting brighter even though it's a dull red and the knuckles and all the other details on the skin and flesh in the dryad bark is actually getting more and more muted which really emphasises the shape and the light hitting the flesh like it could all almost be wet and on top of the dryad bark we are now going to water down some gorthor brown and we're going to glaze that into even smaller sections on the knuckles and all the other flesh parts. It's another one of those models that has a little hidden details that you'll find as you're going around painting. But as you can tell with the very little work that I've done on the bone work already just glazing is the way to go. Um, just take your time very very thin layers of paint it's almost water and then just build it up from there. Now we're taking a huge leap from one set of colours to the other. We are now using Model Air Metallic Steel. And we're going to go around all the trim. Um, the reason I started with steel instead of a darker colour is I'm just going to start working backwards with this one as uh, something a little bit different. I don't want to just start with the gun metal and work my way up, although anyone who watches the channel will know this set of colours. And we're going to start with steel and start shading the other colours in. So, next I'm going to use Screamer Pink for the tongues on this model. I do love the tongue in the skull sculpt and there is one on his left shin as well. Keeping this watered down and doing it in lots of layers. There's the Screamer Pink again, it's got that reddish tone to it. Obviously it's pink but it's got a more of a purple hue when you put it next to the other colours which is a, what I was trying to explain earlier, having certain types of colour next to the other ones does trick the eye into thinking it looks slightly different. Now I'm going to water down Dryad Bark a lot. As you can see it's almost a wash consistency here and I'm going to use that to go over the um, Carrick Stone for the scrolling on the legwork. And don't worry about the Model Air Metallic Steel being too bright or maybe going over it by mistake because we've got a lot of work to do on that as well. Next, I'm going to start applying the Blood Red by Scale 75 to some of the flesh work. Any of the flesh work that's close to where the red armour is, is going to start getting toned up ever so slightly. And this long arm, I'm going to start putting it in the under sections of the arm. That way it sort of looks like the um, arm and muscles on it have twisted around the um, armour. And there's actually armour underneath it and the muscles have warped over it. So basically it's almost a wash consistency, but you don't want to do it as a wash because it ends up looking cloudy, you've got to glaze those in. Next is Agrax Earthshade, and that's watered down a lot. We're going to do two very thin coats of that over all the bone work. As you can see that rib cage is really starting to pop now. And we're obviously going to do the skulls and the backpack. And when it comes to the backpack there, you can do the balls at the top and then drag the Agrax a little bit over the red just to help the bone transition to the red transition ever so slightly. Now we're going back to Zandri Dust to re-highlight what, what we just washed down but just in smaller areas. Um, you want to really focus your brush here. I'm using a... no it's still a Games Workshop standard apparently. I would have thought I would have switched to something else like a Winsor Newton. But um, as you can see I'm holding the brush very close to the tip to keeping the more control of it. And again we're just glazing more of this colour back on. 
and the top end of all the spikes is going to start looking much sharper while everything else looks like it's got a nice smooth transition. Going back to the Carrick Stone now, but this time instead of giving a whole layer over the shin, just going to start picking up the raised areas and the top section of the shin guard. You'll see a lot of me holding my brush like this on this video. Very small motions, but very in control of what's going on. After that, I'm going to start adding Gunmetal by Modular Metallic, which is slightly darker than steel. And we're going to start adding that to about two thirds of the armor. Anything that's towards the bottom section, leaving the steel um, at the top as we usually would. We're just working in reverse this time. So I'm going to start pulling that down and uh, coloring in the bottom halves of all the sections or anything that would look, be completely in shadow. After that, we're going to use Model Air Metallic Black and start going around the sections where the little ball joints are we're going to colour those in and start doing all the underneaths of the trim as well now best to describe that this is you've probably seen me before highlight up the sections in between the ball bearings on the armour trim but this time we're going back the opposite way and darkening down the centre pieces instead leaving the other metallic colours showing through after that, it's a null oil wash to help tone everything together. Now you want to keep in control of this, but you don't have to panic too much as this model, we're going to end up putting a pin wash on this as well, just to add extra solid dark lines around the trim. So if you haven't got a perfectly smooth line from one colour to the other, don't worry, the pin wash will fix that for you by the time you've finished. Now we're going to switch to a Shabti Bone, uh, which is the natural highlight for Zandri Dust, but we're going to work with a much smaller brush at this point. This is where I start using the Windsor Newton. And I'm just highlighting the very tops, any top flat surface is getting highlighted. And also the face is going to get a lot of highlights on it now, around the um, spikes on the head, around the eyebrows and teeth. Teeth need to be painted individually, don't try and just overbrush them all. Just do them in a down motion. Top teeth doing a down motion and the bottom ones doing an up motion. Pink horror mixed with screaming skull will be the next highlight for the tongues. I do like the tongue on the actual head for this model, how it sort of looks like a dog tongue just uh, swinging around the side of its face as it's running. I think that's a really cool detail and adds a lot to that face. And after we finish with that, we're going to be using Pink Horror by Games Workshop on its own. I really did enjoy mucking about with these colours and painting this. Um, it's a lot of fun. I mean, there's so many possibilities for this model uh, with paint schemes and you could make any one of them look really good. Be very careful while painting his tongue though, because the teeth are, his mouth's quite small and his teeth are quite close together. Next I'm using Gunmetal by Model Air Metallic just to do a much more simple metallic part as he has pipes running through his um, guts and a few other places. So instead of going over the top making those elaborate um, and they're quite hidden in his ab abdomen, um, we're just going to make those Gunmetal by Model Air Metallic and almost leave them at that. Um, that way the eye's not drawn. They'll, they'll show up but the eye's not as drawn to them as it is all the other trim and all the other detail that we've done. Next is... Gothor Brown. Again, um, we're just going to keep highlighting up the muscle textures. Um, it's a shame I didn't catch them on camera as much as I would have liked to. But a lot of this is layers and then me checking out how everything else looks and then adding another layer. I just wanted to bring up the um, spikes on that as well, on the um, claw arm. After that we're going to use Caraberg Crimson as a wash and we're going to use that to tone down the tongues. I do use a regular Games Workshop brush for the bottom one but I will probably switch to a different brush to keep in control around the tongue because you don't want Caraberg Crimson all over the skull plating that you've just done. 
And one final highlight for the tongues, I think, with Pink Horror. You could go as far as you want with these tongues and add washes of Drushi Violet and keep bringing it back up, which I could have done. But uh, I liked the bright pinks against the other reds. Um, obviously, with all the other reds in there, they don't look as bright, so I thought it matched quite well. After that, I'm going to use Null Oil again and give the trim a second wash. Obviously this is thinned down, but uh, you want to keep in control of this. And at this point, because of these two steps of um, null oil, those little highlights and shadows that we've previously painted in will really start to uh, have a nice smooth transition now. And for the skull on his chain, it took me a while to figure out what to do. It needed to be a different bone to everything else, so I started with a dryad bark. I couldn't go for an Ashabti bone, I wanted his, I wanted the possessed bones to look different to his uh, trophy. But um, I'm just going to show you how to get a different bone effect using different colours, but in comparison next to the one it still looks like bone. Which is something I want to try and put into my tutorials a little bit more. Next I'm going to start adding a Steel Legion Drab for that. And it's basically a very overzealous highlight. It's going to cover most of the model. But uh, the underneath that's facing down is almost going to stay dryad bark and end up quite black by the time we're done. Giving a, the illusion that it's casting a quite a strong shadow as it flays around in the wind. Next, we're going to use Carrick Stone. And be a little less generous with this, we're going to start working up the, well not the top of the skull, the skull that's facing under his arm, um, where, the, where the light would actually hit it, because the arm's going to be casting a shadow as well, so that's mainly the face plate and the top of the eye socket and the teeth. Now for his eyes, I decided to go for a Caliban green, the reason we picked a green is because it contrasts, or well, complements, sorry, very well with the reds and vice versa. Uh, it's just a natural colour to put in there. It works really well for it. Um, using the Winsor Newton Series 7 here. The eyes aren't too small, but I wanted to uh, keep in control of the brush and not get paint anywhere I didn't want to. And there's also an eye on his shoulder pad, which I almost missed, and for that we're going to use Wild Rider Red. Which is a, quite a vibrant colour by Games Workshop. And that's going to need a couple of coats because there's uh, Rhinox hide underneath that, which is quite a dark colour. At this point I started picking out all the other details as well, um, using German Grey by Model Air. Um, one of the reasons to use grey is we've got blacks, we've got reds, um, and it fits in quite well. So we're going to use that for the other types of pipe, the ones that don't have the grooves in. We're just going to start putting those in, and it's sort of a muted colour, so it contrasts and blends in with the silvers, but brings out the details of the model, and that way you don't leave anything just black or blank. Next up, it's a null oil wash for the uh, skull that we've been doing. That was quite a generous wash that I put on, but I do end up pulling a lot of it to the underneath and uh, cleaning the edges off with my brush. I'm obviously jumping from one step here to the other while things are drying just to get this video finished. Next is Troll Slayer Orange, which is almost um, a luminous orange to be honest. We're going to put that in the centre of the eye there. Um, if you want, you can just paint a small orange circle and leave the rest. It's really not that difficult. Just put small amounts of paint on and let it set for a bit if you're having, if you're having trouble keeping in control. For the eyes, I went to Warpstone Glow. Um, as I wanted to go from the Calibran to a bright green quite quickly because the work surface is very small. Something else I find myself doing now, instead of trying to blend lots of colours, you just jump from one colour to another quite vibrantly depending on the size of the space you actually have to blend things. And for the skull I jump back to using a Carrick Stone on its own and just re-picking out those uh, brows for the eye sockets and the cheekbones 
Not only one cheekbone really, the one that's facing up. The rest of it now is blended enough and is dark enough to uh, be left alone. But we want the top side to just be a little bit more pronounced. And now for all his eyes, um, including the one on his shoulder, we're using Uriel Yellow by Games Workshop. That's going to go dead in the center of there, making the eye look uh, very warm. I also do this on the centers of the, the demon's actual eyes as well over the greens, uh, keeping it very faint, but uh, if you keep going in that same spot, it does put a very nice sharp highlight in the center, emphasizing the look in its eyes. Now, I decided these, I think there's some form of mace or flail, to keep them simple, I basically did those in Brass Scorpion. It also took me a while to figure out what to do with the front, because they look like they're on chains, but at a closer inspection it looks more like, actually, they're probably attached to spines. Um, so I ended up painting that whole section spines, using just the same techniques that we've previously used. Gonna finish this skull off now, I think, with Rakarth Flesh, as its final highlight for the side of the bones and the teeth. It still looks like bone, um, but it's just a slightly different hue, like a more weathered skull, um, as it's not alive, and I was quite happy with the result of that one. Now for the pipes, as we only did one colour on the pipes, I jumped to Skaven Blight Dinge by Games Workshop, just to start bringing out the central shape, so wherever there's a curve, go straight to the centre of it, Start glazing this in from the left and to the right. You'll need to leave yourself a little bit of a surface so you can put the extra colours on uh, in between. Yeah, I was quite happy with the uh, grey colour scheme against the reds. It really did work. Then we have Dawnstone. And that's why we left ourselves a little bit of workspace to add in another colour. Just a very small amount of Dawnstone. Just brings that pipe on the side of his head a little bit more to life and uh, makes it look a little bit more curved. There's a couple of pipes in his arms and some on the under armour. So just it's one of those models, just double check that you haven't missed anything as you work your way around. And then all I've really done for the balls at the, well the balls on the end of the flails is use a warp block bronze as a wash. And I didn't th think it was necessary to uh, put the rest in there. Um, all I did was warp block bronze, bring it back up with the uh, brass scorpion a little bit, and then an Agrax Earthshade wash. And at that point, there's no more paints going on, it's just time for a pin wash, and we are finished. So just using simple red colours, uh, or red toned colours, and a lot of glazing, there really is not many colours on this paint list this time. They're all just different combinations of the same thing. We end up with something that looks almost alive and with a very rich red armour. And uh, quite a decent skin tone to match as well. And the bones add an excellent contrast to the rest of the model. Uh, so I do hope you like that one guys. Uh, I definitely enjoyed painting that one. And we've got some thank yous to give out because if it wasn't for our patrons, we would not have bought the Shadow Spear set. And we have many more Shadow Spear uh, videos coming out. So a big thank you to DWAC, Warren, Love Minis, The Orc Boys, Ludwig Hofbauer, Kit Lindquist, Acmas of Dawn, MTKX11, and Mark. You guys are awesome. We thank you very much for your support. And, uh, it <clears throat> and it's definitely been helping uh, the channel progress along. If you want to join them on Patreon and get early access to all the other videos that we've got for this series, um, links are in the description below. Or if you want to just buy yourself a Shadow Spear box set so you can paint along with the tutorials, check out the Outpost, our affiliate link, down in the description below. Every time you buy some discounted hobby stuff from them, we also get store credit as well for the advertisement. So that all works out well, and it all goes to buying more stuff for the channel. So a big thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked that one. If you do, hit that like button. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and definitely share with your friends on social media because that helps us out a ton. And that's all from me. I shall catch you in the next one.